be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to complete them. I tell you solemnly, till heaven and earth disappear, not one dot, not one little stroke shall disappear from the law until its purpose is achieved. Therefore, the man who infringes even one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the man who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The context of today's gospel that we ju- episode that we just heard is that the synagogue is criticizing St. Matthew's community that they are abandoning and the teachings of the Torah or the Pentateuch. And in response to this, Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. No. Jesus says, I've come to complete them. And meaning to say he have come to fulfill the law according to God's will. And as the Son of God, Jesus has the authority to interpret, to throw new light into the meaning of what the Torah is supposed to be. And in his person has come through his proclamation of the gospel and his life witness to fulfill what has been revealed in the Torah. And as for the prophets, Jesus in particular is trying to notably highlight prophet Hosea 6, chapter 6, that says, I want mercy and not sacrifice. We can see how the Jews in the synagogues were narrow rigid and obstinate and refuse to open to the truth of the salvation that Jesus proclaims. They were locked into their old ways of thinking and believing. In many ways, if we reflect on our lives, if we have grown in our faith, then along the way, would have, we would have made decisive decisions to truly change our lives, to truly open our minds and our hearts to God's love and ways. But if we do not do this consciously, then discernment of God's will become very complex, complicated, and confusing. Do you think that the Holy Spirit and God do not want to reveal God's truth and love to each of us? Of course, God wants us to know His will, to live His will, and to love as Jesus has shown us. But why is it so difficult, confusing, and complex? It's because, first, there's no real sincerity of heart to want to seek God's will and to live God's will. The self-love and of, of many things that we are attached to in life is often in themselves not bad, but they have become obstacles. The good has turned into an obstacle that the attachment has prevented us from loving the greater good and the greater God. And so these distractions of life are are things in life that we, we should become conscious that while they are good, they cannot take up too much of our time, energy, and attention. What truly matters is of the spiritual. The physical are basics. I mean, we need to be healthy, to keep fit, or or whatever. These are basics. The emotions are vulnerable. We can can be affected easily. While the emotions are raw and vulnerable, there's a deeper truth that can help us to, to, to heal, to bring healing 
to bring greater understanding and to relate people at a deeper and more wholesome way. And if our sincerity of heart is really focused and built on Jesus, then our eyes too will put on the eyes of Jesus to see people from the perspective of how Jesus sees them. And if our eyes are, 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 are truly the eyes of Jesus, then our hearts will be compassionate. We will live the justice that Jesus proclaims. Is it difficult? Yes and no. As I said, you know, there's no sincerity of heart. And the sincerity is lacking because there is also a lack of gratitude in our hearts to all that God has given us and blessed us. We have so easily forgotten that every moment of our lives is because of God. It's because of God's blessing. It's because God has sustained us, protected us, forgiven us, blessed us, cared for us, and, and given us the light of the Spirit to live in His ways. So the really real of life is not in the physical or the emotional, but is in the spiritual. When we die, we will be cremated and buried. Now there's cremation. But the soul continues to live on. The soul, the reality of who we are, continues to live on. It faces God. And what we have lived, we bring to God. And, and then God will, will, will see how, whether we deserve eternal life or send us back to purgatory for some purification. And that, that is what eventually life is all about. Let us not forget and get carried away by the superficialities of life that distract, distort the truth and, and like the Jews in the synagogue become narrow and blinded and, and, and really obstinate to wanting to seek and do God's will.